Wonderful good day, ladies and gentlemen, to the mining news on Commodity TV. Oceana Gold reported solid financial results for the first quarter of 2023, with very safe production and strong production results from Didipio and Hale. New Zealand was weaker, but they expect a much better performance for the rest of the year. Cash flow was negative $16 million, but this was due to special items. For example, 6,000 ounces gold couldn't no longer be allocated to the quarter in sales, but will be booked in the second quarter. Also, Oceana Gold made several tax payments for the full year 2023 already in the past quarter. Furthermore, a lot of investments were again made at Hale and Exploration is also running at full speed. The Hale Underground Mine was officially opened this quarter. Mining has progressed to the top of the ore body and the company remains on track to deliver the first ore from the Underground Mine in the fourth quarter of 2023. Consolidated gold production for the first quarter was over 118,100 ounces and an additional 3,511 tons copper were mined. All-in sustaining costs were $1,567 per ounce on gold sales of over 112,000 ounces. Revenue was $244 million with an EBITDA of $100 million. Adjusted earnings per share were $0.06 cents per share and operating cash flow was $0.14 cents per share. Very important to note that debt was only $191 million as of March 31st, 2023, with a debt to equity ratio of only 0.3. We expect debt to, de to continue to decline significantly in 2023 and also in 2024. The repair of the trunnion of the Macras ball mill was completed on 30th March and the plant has been fully operational again since April. The company's business success is also reflected in the resumption of the semi-annual dividend payment of one cent per share, which was paid on 28th April. The pointed figure chart looks also very good. We see an initial price target of five to five and a half Canadian dollars and longer term seven to eight Canadian dollars. Tudor Gold started its 2023 exploration program at Treaty Creek, located in the Golden Triangle of Northwestern British Columbia. The fully funded program includes a minimum of 25,000 meters diamond drill, diamond drilling designed to target the northern and northeastern mineral extensions of the gold storm deposit. Drilling in 2021 and 2022 to date has shown the highest grades of gold, copper and silver mineralization on the Treaty Creek permit areas. Tudor Gold was thus able to report indicated resources of 23.37 million gold equivalent ounces at a grade of over 1.1 grams gold per ton equivalent and an inferred mineral resource of 7.35 million ounces gold equivalent at 0.91 grams gold equivalent per ton. In addition to the northern step-out drilling at the Gold Storm deposit, the company plans exploration drilling at the perfect storm zone to follow up on the six drill holes drilled in 2020 and 21. These all intersected gold and silver mineralization, notably whole PS2106, with 0.66 grams gold and of almost 3.7 grams silver per ton, or 118 meters, including 31.5 meters of 0.84 grams gold per ton and over 6 grams silver per ton. PSZ is a gold dominant mineralized system with a strike length of 1.3 kilometers and is located approximately 2.5 kilometers southwest of the Goldstorm deposit and approximately 2.5 kilometers northeast of Seabridge Gold's iron cap deposit near the southwest boundary of the Treaty Claim Block. The new drilling will continue where it left off in late 2022. The focus is on expanding the resource in the highest grid areas in the 300H, CS600, and DS5 domains with for drill rigs. Two drill rigs are currently active at the northern aspects of these domains, with two additional drill rigs expected to arrive on site by mid-May. In addition, the perfect storm system will be further explored with exploration drilling and two drill rigs are expected to be in operation on this drill target by the end of June. Quite a lot going on at Two Door Gold and we see the share price continuing to rise with good news. Please note the disclaimer superimposed now. The stocks discussed are part or maybe part of the SRC Mining Special Situation Certificate and I'm a shareholder in the companies. Thanks for watching us and bye bye from Switzerland.